We're talking to John Rubino from DollarCollapse.com here at HowStreet.com Radio. Silver closing in on 31 bucks an ounce uh, this morning. One of the explanations that uh, a lot of folks are taking physical delivery. And over at uh, KingWorldNews.com, Eric King talking to James Turk about the massive short squeeze in silver. That's coming. Yeah, but basically an awful lot of people are short paper silver out there. In other words, they've sold silver into the market gotten cash for it and at some point in the future they've got to buy back that silver and um, the numbers are pretty astounding in terms of the size of the amount of physical silver that's out there there really isn't that much physical Mm -hmm. silver available in the world right now and it's the the big banks and um, and big commercial users of silver who are short and need to buy it back at some point all have to buy it back at once you get what uh, what James Turk is referring to a classic short squeeze where they, they have to buy it. They're con- contractually obligated to do so, to deliver it to whoever lent it to them. And it's not available. So they have to pay basically whatever price uh, the market demands from them. And the market's going to demand a, a, a way higher price than this. And so that's what we're seeing lately, because even though a lot of the big silver miners are apparently starting to hedge again, which means they're they're selling their silver ahead of time, which is generally um, bearish for the market because that extra amount of silver being sold tends to push down the price. Well, while that's been happening, silver has popped back up again. It's up about four bucks an ounce since the the reports of um, minor hedging have come out, Mm -hmm. which means physical demand for silver has swamped the the new hedging coming coming into the market. Um, And so there really is no available physical silver for the, the guys who are short who have to buy it back. And so it's going to be fascinating to watch. If it plays out the way James Turk is talking about, um, this could be the the short squeeze that a lot of people in the silver market have been expecting yeah. for a really long time. And if it happens, then, then you could see gap up behavior in the silver market where it'll pop by a couple of bucks an ounce in an afternoon, you know, and, and 10 bucks an ounce in a week. Wow. And uh, if that happens, two things. Well, well, first of all, the, the one obvious one is that the people who are long silver will make a lot of money. And the other less obvious one, but more interesting one, I think, is that the people who are short silver will have massive losses. Mm-hmm. And somebody's going to have to start reporting those losses because they can't hide them forever. And a lot of them are these big money center banks. And we don't know now the size of their silver shorts, but we know they're substantial. And we know that... Uh, they might be larger for some banks than others, and the, the banks that are most exposed might have to report really big debilitating losses. And if that happens, then we see reverberations through the financial markets. You know, a, a bank reporting a big unexpected loss is going to scare the, the shareholders of that bank and the shareholders of a lot of other banks. So we're going to see uh, financial stocks be affected by this if it plays out that way in the near term. Interesting trend here that uh, James Turk picks up on. The ownership of physical metal as opposed to paper silver is really becoming important. It is. People are finally figuring out that uh, you, you don't want to own a piece of paper that represents precious metals because there's no guarantee that you are anything other than an unsecured creditor mm-hmm. of somebody who could go bankrupt if all you own is a piece of paper. But if you own the physical metal and it's in your you know, your, your storage shed or buried in the backyard or in a foreign vault, then, then it's yours. And nobody can take it away from you. And, uh, and you have a real asset that isn't someone else's liability. And that, that's a crucial distinction, and people are finally figuring that out. So they're demanding real precious metals, real physical precious metals. And we're finding that the supply of available precious metals at these prices is really limited. Yeah. And so people are paying higher and higher prices and the, the market for silver is now in something called backwardation, which means you've got to pay more for silver now than if you contract for it in the future. And that, that's a sign that physical demand is extremely strong and supplies are very tight. So in that kind of a situation, um, you can see prices spike when anything happens to cause physical demand to go up just a little bit. Because if, uh, you know, picture the, um, the Iranian warships sailing um, near Israel right now. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there was just a news story coming out that said Israel might respond to this provocation. And, uh, you know, let something like that happen in the Middle East. And all of a sudden, people get more scared than they are already. There's your black swan. And, 
Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, there's no silver out there. Yeah. And there are people out there going, all right, you know, 40 bucks an ounce? Sure. All right. Is that what it takes? You know, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so you see prices go through the roof because the market is so tight. And that could be where, we're, are, where we are at some point in the near future. And there's no guarantee that, uh, that it plays out this way immediately. But the conditions are ripe for something like this to happen. Any kind of an external shock would uh, would send buyers into the market when there's no physical silver available for them. So we'll see. But uh, it, it's interesting that we've created the, the conditions for something like that to happen. And not just in the silver market, the same sort of thing can be extended into the gold market, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, gold is a, is a way bigger market. And um, there there is a lot more gold available out there. So you wouldn't expect to see that kind of volatility, but you could still see extreme volatility by the standards of the gold market. You, know, you wouldn't see a 30 or 40% increase in gold as easily as you could see that in silver. You know, 10 bucks on silver is a third, almost. Yeah. And um, that's, that's something that, uh, you know, we've seen four bucks in the last couple of weeks without any real catalyst. So toss a catalyst into the mix, and, and you could easy, easily see something that uh, would be in silver the equivalent of uh, several hundred dollars an ounce in gold. Keep your eye on those Iranian warships steaming up the Suez Canal and watch the price of silver. It's going to probably yeah, go that's, parabolic. That's, but that, that's just one of many things that yes. could happen. And any kind of external shock in a super tight market can lead to extreme price volatility. Yeah. So the, I think the interesting story is that we've created an extremely tight market, and now it's vulnerable to extreme volatility. Yeah. And so... What we want to be on the lookout for is any kind of a catalyst that uh, and it could be one big bullion bank um, admitting that it has a lot of losses in its silver shorts. That that could be the kind of thing mm-hmm. that sends the market through the roof, too. And, and, and you know, there's lots of things like that yeah. out there. And, yeah. and the only question now is whether we see some kind of a catalyst in the near future and what the catalyst is. John Rubino, co-author with James Turk of The Collapse of the Dollar and How to Profit from It. Check out John's website, dollarcollapse.com. You can reach him by email also at john at dollarcollapse.com. John, I always appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, my friend. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at www.howstreet.com. Howstreet.com Radio is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.